Welcome to my absolute beginner's guide to Kings of War. If you're an experienced wargamer or you've played Kings of War before, this guide probably isn't for you. In fact, you'll probably find it downright patronising. But if you're brand new to wargaming, miniature gaming or Kings of War, this guide is for you. I'll explain in four short digestible videos the absolutely basic rules and setup you need to play Mantic's Kings of War. This is video two, how to move. Let's get into it. This second video is about the first phase of the game, but before we get into that, I'll explain how the game is structured. Kings of War is what's called an I go, you go game, as in the first player takes their turn all the way through, and then their opponent does the same thing. This continues until each player has had six turns. At the end of the sixth turn, the player who went last rolls a six-sided dice, and if it's a four or above, you have a seven. To determine who goes first, you both roll a dice, and the one with the highest score chooses who takes the first turn. With the draw, you roll again until you get a winner. Each turn comprises three phases, movement, shooting and combat. In movement, you move your units, which is what we're covering in this video. In shooting, you use any ranged attacks or abilities your army has, including casting spells. And in combat, you resolve any melee combats that are taking place. Once that's done, play passes to your opponent, and it's their turn. Movement is a huge part of the game, as it determines what you can see, who you can attack, and more. But the principles are pretty simple. Of course, before we do movement, you want to know how to get your units the table, but once again, Kyle from Mastercrafted has got us covered with a great video on deployment, which you will be able to visit by clicking on this link. So once you've got the basics of movement, why not check out his video? There are seven types of movement in the game, which are halt, change facing, advance, back, sidestep, at the double, and charge. Sounds complicated, but it's not, I promise. We'll go through them now with the exception of charge, which we'll cover in the combat video. Now there are some special moves that affect movement, but we'll cover those at the end. Halt is the easiest because you're not doing any movement. You might choose this if you're happy where your unit is, if you can't move, or if you want to do something like shoot without penalty. We'll cover that in the next video. But basically, you don't want to move, so you halt. Change facing is next. This is where you pivot your unit any direction you fancy. Anytime you pivot in Kings of War, you move around a pivot point in the centre of the unit. You might want to do this if, like in this case, you've got an enemy behind you or in your flank, and you want to face them, or if you need to be looking in another direction. So can I move any direction? That's it. A 360 degree range of turn always around the center. There are some things to note if you're close to other units when you're moving, but don't worry, we'll cover those in a minute. Advance is our simplest movement. Every unit has a speed stat. The speed measures how many inches that unit can move. Every unit can move any distance in inches up to that speed stat. And at any point along that journey, they can pivot around the center, don't forget, up to 90 degrees one time. So can I split that pivot into smaller ones that add up to 90? No, you can't split that 90 degrees into multiple pivots. It's one pivot at any point up to 90 degrees and a distance up to your movement stat. So my unit has a speed of 6. So I moved 3, pivoted and move another 3. Perfect. So the opposite of advance is moving backwards. The difference between the two is that when you move back, you can't pivot and you can only move backwards half of your move stat. So my speed 6 unit wants to go backwards, so I can only go 3 without pivoting? Right. Another option is to sidestep your unit. This follows the same principle as your backwards movement. You can move left or right in parallel, no pivots allowed, and it's half your movement stat. Got it. The last of the movements we're going to cover in this video is at the double. This is where your unit is marching forward at speed and so moves straight forward a distance of up to double its movement statistic with no change of facing along the way. The difference here is where there is any difficult terrain or obstacles in your way. So in this case, the table is clear and my speed 6 unit has moved 12 inches forwards. However here, there's some difficult terrain in the way. Without any special rules, our unit can move up to double its movement speed, but stop short of entering the difficult terrain because you can't move at the double over difficult terrain or obstacles. So I can move up to 12 inches with my speed 6 unit, but I stop before entering the terrain. Now that all seems pretty simple, but you probably noticed we've not covered the last type of movement, charge. That's because none of the movements we've discussed involve you getting into combat, whereas charge is how you get stuck into the enemy. We're going to cover that one in the combat video. <laughs> All the examples we talked about assume the unit was clear of other units, which rarely happens, so we're going to quickly talk about what happens when you've got other units near you. If your unit is a friendly one, you can move through it at any time. Your mates essentially just get out of the way to allow you to move through. The only caveat is that you have to end your move clear of the unit. So I can move this troop at a double through the horde to stand in front of it. Right, 
but you can't do that with enemies. If you have an enemy in front of you, you can't walk through them. Obviously, they wouldn't let you. This also applies to pivots. You can pivot through any unit so long as your pivot lands you clear of the unit. So I can turn this unit so long as my turn finishes clear. The situation with your enemies is important. Every move you take with an enemy unit around you has to end with your movement one inch clear of that enemy unit unless you're going into combat, which means it'll be a charge. Like I said, we'll cover that in the combat video. So in this case, we don't want to charge the enemy, we do want to block them. So I move straight forward but stop an inch away. But of course there are exceptions. Sometimes when stuff is killed or in a bunch of other situations, you start your turn within an inch of the enemy. In that case, you definitely can move within an inch, so long as you don't get any closer than the distance you started. So here I started a turn right next to this enemy unit. So I can move my unit and end my turn no closer than I started. Perfect. <laughs> Under each unit, you'll find a listing of their special rules. If you're just starting, you can ignore them, but of course to play the game, it's important to take them into account, so we're going to cover a few of the more important ones that affect movement here. So the rules we're covering are Nimble, Pathfinder, Shambling and Fly. The first rule is Nimble. Nimble is for fast, mobile troops. What it means is that in any given movement type, they get an extra 90 degree pivot. Ooh, how exciting! So I'm making a normal advance move, and my Nimble unit can pivot 19 degrees twice. And on an at the double move, sideways or backwards move, you can pivot once. So let's say I move backwards, I can turn as well. Right, as you can imagine, this freedom of movement means you can manoeuvre a lot more flexibly and even dash around enemy units using your two pivots. We'll cover some examples in the combat video. The next rule we'll cover is Pathfinder. We're sticking with our lichens because they happen to have this rule also, how convenient! A Pathfinder unit ignores the effect of difficult terrain. So you remember we said we can't move at the double into difficult terrain? Guess what? Pathfinder units can. It also affects their ability to get into combat without penalties, which we'll cover in the combat video. Shambling is an interesting rule, generally on units that are summoned or undead like these skeletons. They have all the same movement ability as other units with the exception that they cannot move at the double. No marching for you, shambly boys! That means they can be much slower to get into combat, which might feel like a disadvantage to you, but the reason they are shambling is that they can be targeted by a specific magical spell which moves them in the ranged phase, and we'll cover that one in the next video. Fly is a particularly powerful rule for units that can, you know, fly, like this demon spawn. They have all the same rules as a normal unit, except they can ignore units and terrain that they're flying over, so long as they land clear of them. So my big rat demon thing is in a lake, does it matter? No, it's where you land that's important. So let's make an at the double move. The demon ignores that, and can fly at the double as far as his movement allows, but he can't land in another piece of difficult terrain like this forest. It's where he lands that's important. So this unit... <coughs> they're gargoyles. Okay, whatever. These gargoyles are speed 10. Can they fly over the enemy? Uh, yes. In this case, they can complete their speed 10 move over the top of the enemy and turn to face a different direction. You can also turn whilst over the top of units so long as you land clear of them. Okay, so we are done with movement. It's the first phase of the game, and while I've been a bit naughty and missed out charging the enemy, which does take place in this phase, you have got most basics. We'll skip back and cover charging in the combat video, which will be before. But in the meantime, on to the ranged phase. May the best general win. <laughs> 